Hey there and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode, we're going to walk through the process of building these shelves. In our case, they're bookshelves, but of course you could use them to store whatever you'd like. Let's get started. We started our project by determining how we'd build our bookshelves to best fit the space. The overall room is 12 feet by 10 feet with eight foot ceilings. I sketched everything out and came up with a plan. The smaller shelves on the left side are going to be about four feet wide by 38 inches tall and then the larger unit is five feet wide by seven feet tall. My wife thought it all looked good, so I started getting the work area set up and ready to build some shelves. The weather was beautiful outside, so I thought I'd rip the plywood to size out in the driveway. It's nice to have a good outfeed table when you're working with full sheets of plywood, and today I'm using the cut hub system to help make quick work out of making all the cuts. It's easy to set up, and it has a spot for the table saw and boards to create an outfeed table. My wife, Britt, helped out since it's a lot easier to maneuver the large sheets with an extra set of hands. The table saw is set up to rip the plywood to 11 and 3 quarters inches in width, which is plenty deep for books and most other items. And it's an efficient use of each sheet since you get four pieces cut to that width out of a four foot wide by eight foot long sheet with just a small strip left over. I purchased four sheets of plywood to build both shelving units and ended up using two and a half to three sheets for the large five by seven unit and one sheet for the smaller four foot wide shelf unit. Three quarter inch radiata pine plywood from Home Depot was used, which is the best quality for the money at our local stores. We moved the cut hub workstation and set it up with the miter saw so we could start cutting the boards to length. I cut the left and right vertical pieces 84 inches in length for the tall shelf, then cut the remaining pieces to form the outsides of each unit. The 5 foot by 7 foot tall shelf unit is about as big as I'd make it so that it can be completely assembled in the garage and then carried into the home and tipped up vertically once in the room. If you have 8 foot ceilings, you'd have about a foot between the top and the ceiling to place storage baskets or decorations, which works out pretty well. For more information about the cost to build this project and plans, check out the link in the description below or go to DIYPete.com shelves. If you're needing shelves for a closet instead of a bookshelf, I have another video on YouTube showing that process, which is very similar to how these are built, but with deeper shelves and hanging racks. It's linked to in the description below. We have small closets in our 1970s home, so making each one as efficient as possible is a must. Once the cuts were made, I began assembling the smaller shelf unit. For today's project, I'm using pocket holes, which are a quick and simple way for the average DIYer to connect the boards. But of course, feel free to use the joinery of your choice if you're a more advanced woodworker. The Craig jig and the stop collar on the bit are both set for 3 quarter inch stock settings. I oriented the boards in ways to make the units look nice and to minimize the pocket holes being seen. You can choose to adjust where holes are drilled and how the boards go together depending on which direction the shelves are in the room and if there are sides that are against a corner or that won't be seen. Pocket holes were then drilled on the inside top and bottom of each vertical board. Simply put the board in the jig and then drill four holes on each end. I usually do it by eye, but of course you could measure to get each hole spaced perfectly. It's a good idea to use wood glue to help strengthen each connection, so add a little before putting in the screws. For this unit, the top horizontal board overlaps the two vertical pieces, so the top of the shelf is essentially one slab. Use one and a quarter inch coarse thread screws to assemble the shelving units, and I like to use a right angle clamp to help hold everything together while the screws go in. Simply repeat the process to connect the second vertical board to the top piece, taking time to make sure the boards are nice and flush when going together. Take a measurement towards the top to determine the length for the bottom shelf. 3 quarter inch plywood's actual dimensions are usually around 23 30 seconds of an inch, uh, so this will make sure the bottom shelf is the perfect width. Four holes are drilled on each end's bottom side so they won't be seen, and then tap those boards after the holes are drilled to remove sawdust from them. To help align the bottom shelf at the perfect height, I cut a spacer to about two and a quarter inches in length. This puts the top of the shelf three inches above the ground, and then we'll fasten a kick plate to it later in the project. As you can see, there's a slight warp in the plywood, but adding a second support will help straighten those boards out. 
Measure to find the center and use a square to make the marks to help ensure things go together nice and straight. After finding the center point, I like to draw a line on the side where the edge of the plywood will line up. Then measure the distance between the top and bottom board to figure out the exact length that center support needs to be. I put the pocket holes on the left side of the board since you'll never see them because they'll face the corner of the room with our specific layout. The holes don't bother me and they blend in just fine in my opinion. And if there are books on the shelf, they'll be completely hidden. Of course, you could fill them with wooden plugs, get them flush and stain them if you'd like. I finished up with the center support and used a clamp to hold it in place while I attached it. It was a good point to take a break as little man just woke up from a nap, so we hung out a bit before getting on to the next step. I measured to determine the width for each shelf and then cut the shelves about an eighth of an inch shorter than the distance between each vertical board so it will slide in easily as an adjustable shelf. I then tested them out to make sure they'd fit and to get an idea of how I would like to space them in a later step. Creating adjustable shelves is made easy using a shelf pin jig. They're simple to set up and I generally will start from one end and then play leapfrog with the pin and the jig. It helps to clamp the jig in place while using it and you won't need holes near the way top or the way bottom of the unit since the shelves would be too short. So I like to start by butting the jig up to the underside of the top board and then drilling just that last hole and then move the jig, put in the pin and repeat. As you can see, the process does go fairly fast, but there are quite a few holes that will need to be drilled. When the shelves are eventually installed, you'll use a pin under each corner of the shelf to hold it up. So four pins for each shelf. I like to lay the unit on its side and to do the front side holes first. Take your time with this process to ensure you have nice level shelves. This specific jig spaces the holes every one and a quarter inches and uses a five millimeter bit with an adjustable stop collar. You'll need quite a few pins for this project, so I'd recommend buying the 48 piece packs if you get them locally or getting them on Amazon where I found the cheapest pins. Once the front side is done, go ahead and flip the unit over and then drill the holes on the back side. I'm not going to show all the holes being drilled since it gets repetitive, but once that backside is finished, the adjustable shelving system is ready for shelf pins. Before starting the second shelf unit, I wanted to show you the new way I've been carrying tools around the last six months that's been super handy. They're called SWAT clips and I use them in place of a tool belt because I can carry everything I need and it's tight against my body and not dangling around. I always know where my marking and measuring tools are and I only carry what's needed for each job depending on which SWAT clip setup I'm using. My friends Joe and Dave with SWAT clips live a couple hours away from me and they drop by to set me up with SWAT clips and to explain how they work. I honestly love using the clips and all the accessories come in super handy for different types and sizes of jobs and projects. If you're interested, you can check them out at SWATclips.com and tell them DIY Pete sent you. Next, I brought in the boards to begin assembling the larger shelf unit, which goes together very similar to the smaller one we already put together. For this one, I did the pocket holes on the horizontal boards. The top shelf is seven feet high, so the holes won't be seen by anyone if they face the ceiling, and then the lower board will face the ground. Here's the top horizontal board being attached to the vertical sideboard, again using one and a quarter inch long coarse thread screws. The top is connected to the other vertical board in this step, and you'll notice I didn't use wood glue for the assembly of this unit, and that's because someday the office may become another bedroom for the kiddos, and we might need to disassemble it and adjust the size to fit it in another room of the home. The bottom shelf is now going in and I used the same two and a quarter inch spacer to help align the board while attaching it. Using a couple clamps will keep that spacer in place to help ensure the lower shelf is installed nice and level. A measurement was taken at the sides to figure out the exact height for the two center dividers. And you can see there's a slight bow to the lower shelf, but those dividers are going to help straighten it out. Four pocket holes were then drilled at the top and bottom of each vertical divider.
Next, I measured the total width and divided it to figure out the spacing for the dividers. The three sections each have about 19 inch wide shelves and you can make a template to help line up the dividers nice and straight when installing them. Each divider is then installed at the top and bottom with screws and I like having the width of each shelf around 19 inches or so because it helps with organizing the books in many different categories since you'll have a total of 21 sections in this larger unit. I set up the cut hub miter saw station with a stop to make cutting all 18 shelves go super fast. Once a stop is set up with the initial measurement for a specific piece, you don't need to measure any of the remaining cuts. Next, I test fit the shelves and took a look at spacing. I actually cut a few extra shelves in case I wanted some smaller sections, but I didn't end up deciding to use them. To strengthen the base, I ripped a couple pieces of plywood to two and a quarter inches in width, added some pocket holes, and then connected it to the underside of the shelving unit. We wanted to do adjustable shelves for this unit as well, so I got out the shelf pin jig, started from the top side, and began drilling. Now the jig does make the process go fairly fast, but keep in mind you have around 650 or so holes to drill, so plan on doing this for around 20 minutes. Flip the frame over once the first side is complete and repeat the process on the back. Now drilling the holes is really repetitive, but it's worth it to me to have those adjustable shelves. I moved it onto the floor so it was easier to install the row of permanent shelves, which are placed about 40 inches up from the lowest shelf. This permanent row helps keep the vertical board straight and it strengthens the overall shelving unit. Pocket holes were drilled on the underside of the three shelves and I measured down from the top and determined what the shelf height would be, then cut a template to use as a spacer to help make installing each shelf easier. Installing these permanent shelves definitely did a good job helping remove the little bit of warp that those vertical boards did have. The next step was to make a 1x4 board to install in the top and bottom of each section to further strengthen the shelves and to provide an area to be able to attach the shelving to your wall. The board is attached using screws that go into the sides and top. Here's a quick look showing how the pocket holes are drilled into the board and then the last board being installed in a bottom section. I went out to the table saw and ripped a 1x4 board into 3 8 inch thick strips to trim out the front of the bookshelves and you could use edge banding if you'd prefer but I like how the strips look and that they are durable and quick to install. Once the strips were cut I laid them out and began measuring and cutting each piece to size. You'll want to make sure to use glue to attach each trim piece. The trim can then be lined up and nailed into place. An 18 gauge nailer and one inch nails works great for the trim. Just use a damp cloth to remove any excess glue that squeezes out if needed. Continue cutting and adding each strip one at a time to make sure you get a perfect fit. Use wood glue and then secure them in place with nails and the trim will cover up the ends of the plywood to give it a finished and professional look and it's really going to transform your piece. The trim pieces on the two outside vertical boards extend all the way from top to bottom and then the trim on the two center dividers stops above where the kick plate trim will be. The kick plate trim was made by cutting a 1x4 board to 3 inches in width and then down to a 3 8 inch thickness. I ran the board through the table saw twice to be able to cut all the way through the piece and then cut the kick plate to length on the miter saw. Apply glue, put the kick plate in place and then secure using a nailer. Now back to the smaller bookshelf. I added the bottom supports along the front and back of the base and secured them in place and then added the 1x4 boards that are used at the top and bottom of each section to strengthen the unit and to provide an area to attach the shelves to the wall. The trim was then added in a similar fashion to how it was done on the larger bookshelves and you can of course build as many shelving units as you'd like and to any custom size using the same techniques. We chose to do the smaller shelf for the corner of the room, so we still had some wall space for pictures above it. 
Next, I cut a bunch of 3 8 inch strips to use for the trim on the front of each shelf. I had a scrap 1x6 board laying around that I used, and I cut the length to size before making those strips. Then I took the strips back into the garage and began attaching them to the front of each shelf using a combination of glue and 18 gauge nails. Once everything was assembled, I started with the sanding process, and for each shelf, I used an orbital sander and 220 grit sandpaper to sand the top, bottom, and sides of the shelves. Back in the garage, I sanded the rest of the shelving units using 220 grit sandpaper and going over all the surfaces. You'll want to make sure to go over all of the shelf pin holes to clean them up as well. This is a pretty dusty process, so definitely wear a mask. Once the dust cleared, I used a pre-stain wood conditioner to help the stain go on more evenly. Go ahead and use a rag to apply one coat on all surfaces of the bookshelves. This is going to minimize the chances of blotchy areas because it seals up the pores of the wood a bit so the stain soaks in more evenly. I applied an oil-based wood stain named Golden Oak by Minwax. We really like this stain and it's what we used for all the trim inside our home. I did one coat of the stain, but if you want to do it a little darker or if it goes on unevenly, you can certainly do a second coat. I like to use a brush to help get the stain into the pocket holes and creases of the shelves. And this stuff is pretty smelly, so have plenty of ventilation while applying the stain and let it dry in the shop for at least a few days before bringing it into the home. I let the stain dry completely before coming back out to the garage to apply the sealer. I decided to use a water-based polycrylic sealer for this project because it provides a nice looking and durable finish, yet it dries super quickly. I actually tore my ACL in my knee playing adult league hockey a month before this project was built and had surgery coming up in just a couple days, so I wanted to get the project completed as soon as possible since I won't be able to work on it after surgery. And the water-based sealer basically dries in minutes compared to many hours, so I'd be able to finish the project before surgery. Two coats of the sealer were applied to all surfaces of the shelves. Later that day, I removed the baseboard from the office wall and then brought in the small shelf first. Next came the larger shelf and I was able to move it through the hallway easily by sliding it on a towel. And once in the office, I tipped it up vertically to get it ready to install. I used a countersink bit to pre-drill and then one and a quarter inch long wood screws to connect the two bookshelves together. Use a level to double check that the shelves are plumb. Then use a stud finder to locate the studs in the wall. My walls are all 16 inches on center, so just mark where each stud is and then pre-drill using the countersink bit and use two and a half inch long wood screws to secure it firmly to the wall. Once it's attached, your shelves will be rock solid and ready to hold as many books as you want it to. I added a short piece of baseboard trim to the wall and then began installing the adjustable shelves. The five millimeter shelf pins can be put in the holes at whatever height you'd like to fit your books. And as long as the overall frame of the unit was installed level and plumb, each adjustable shelf should be level two. If it makes it easier, use a pliers to help push the shelf pins in. Here's a look at the finished shelves. I was really happy with how they turned out and glad to have the project completed before heading off for knee surgery that next morning. Surgery went great and I was able to get into the office after a few days to start organizing the books on the new shelves. Britt did most of the work and organizing, um, but it felt good to finally have the books out of storage containers and back on the shelves to read.
All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed checking out how these shelves were built. If you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And comment below, I'd love to hear what projects you're working on. All right, take care and cheers. Thank you.